Jesus. 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 Now you be God. You be Almighty God. You know, be manu. You know, be manu. Now you be God. You be Almighty God. You be Almighty God. You know, be manu. You know, be manu. Now you be God. Hallelujah. It has been an amazing time in the presence of God. And every day, God takes us to a higher level of insight and revelation. And today will not be any different. We are going to sing that song prayerfully. And I want you to say this Forever, your word is settled. Yesterday night, Apostle taught us a deep mystery about the shield of faith as we sing it say lord in my life forever your word is settled enough of arguments enough of controversy enough your word is settled your word is settled forever your word is settled let's chant it forever your word is settled Forever your word is settled in my life. 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 Forever your word is settled. Forever your word is settled. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Forever your word is settled. Hallelujah. Let's take our seats very quickly. Second Kings chapter 4. Second Kings chapter 4. I'll be reading from verse 1. Bereketesh Kataya. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. Thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. Thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. However, however, Despite his fear of the Lord, despite being a son of the prophet, we see an aberration in his life. He says, the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons. A widow is left with two sons. He says, to be what? I want you to shout it, to be what? But he feared the Lord. But he feared the Lord. Where am I going with this? By the grace of God, God has been revealing mysteries to us. And we have been rising 
However, I have noticed that if the devil knows that you are about to escape, there is something that he does to stain your testimony. You may be a prophet. You may fear the Lord. But if care is not taken, the creditors will enslave your generation. Tell your neighbor, say God forbid. Say God forbid. Let's open quickly to Matthew chapter 17. We'll be shortening between these two verses. Matthew chapter 17 from verse 24 to 27. I have realized in my short walk with God that there is a mechanism and a strategy designed by Satan and his agents to limit the children of God. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, we have noticed an anomaly. We have noticed something about your master. They said to him, doth not your master pay what? We have noticed that your master is living in a way that depicts that he is not under the kind of financial constraints that everybody is under. The Bible says, they that received tribute came. And what did Peter say? He said, yes. Watch this. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus did what? Prevented him. Jesus said, look, Peter, this thing looks like a small issue. But you see that question that they asked you. It's not time to enter into the house with me. We have something we need to iron out. And he asked him a question. He said, what thinkest thou, Simon? So, he's walking with Jesus. He has fellowship with Jesus. He has access to the master. In a process of intimacy to enter into the habitation of the master, something stopped him. What did the Bible call them? Those that collect what? Tribute. What stopped Peter from entering into the house, a place of intimacy with the, with the master? What stopped him? What stopped him? What is tribute? What is tribute? I thought Jesus would come and help him. Jesus left him there. It is Jesus that was not under that yoke. And he asked him a question. He said, Simon, how do you think? Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So Jesus knows that I have to correct your perception. And he said, of whom do the kings of the earth take what? Custom. That means it's customary. That means it is normal. People have accepted it as the status quo. That I want to come and serve God. But tribute must be paid. I want to come to the house of the Lord. Some people want to be here now. They can't. Some people want to serve God. They can't. Some people wanted to travel down. They can't. Seven days of life changing impact. But they have to stay somewhere. Why? Because the tribute collectors are around. He asked the question. Who do they collect tribute from? He said of their own children or of what? Strangers. The Bible says Jesus prevented him. Jesus said this is not a small issue. Let's talk. Next verse. Peter said unto him of what? Wow. He's saying the kings of the earth. An apostle has taught us strategically that the kings of the earth, they have a master. What's his name called? What's his name called? Satan. They created a strategy to ensure that anybody that is not of their seed, it is customary for tribute to interfere with their work with God. And he said it has become so prevalent that it is the norm. It has taken over their mindset that they think it is normal. They think it is normal that if your boss says you should come to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you won't think twice. Yes or no? But if we say we are doing seven days of visitation, people say, what are they doing there? Tribute. 
tribute. He says, if you are of the seed of the kings of the earth, look at what he said next. He says, Jesus now said it. He said, but the children are free. Tell your neighbor, say, the children are free. Jesus gave him mystery. Jesus gave him mystery. He said there is a strategy designed by Satan. But the children of the kings are what? Tell your neighbor, say, I'm exempted. Say it again, say, I'm exempted. So do you see that the anomaly that happened to the prophet, Jesus was not surprised, was he? He said, you may be a prophet. You may be God-fearing. You may fear the Lord. But if the creditors come knocking, if you do not understand the provision that I have made for your exemption, you and your children will be born servants. I don't care who you are. If you disregard this revelation, Jesus himself prevented Peter a very short passage of scripture but very deep so what is the mechanism what is the mechanism that Jesus has made provision for that will exempt you because he said there is an exemption plan be a child of the what the king I say it all the time there is a lie being perpetrated by the devil about the financial systems that God has instituted for the body of Christ. Let's open very quickly to the book of 2 Corinthians. 8 from verse 7. I'll read it very quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And then we're going to pray. Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith in utterance in knowledge in all diligence in your love to us see that ye abound in this grace also paul is speaking again he's saying there is something you need to realize that as you are abounding in all these other dimensions berekete ensure that you abound in this grace also ensure i see the way believers sometimes passively address this issue of finances and i look at them i say do you realize the implications of your neglect paul is speaking he's saying ensure that this grace also he didn't say you have it he said you are bound in it you demonstrate it in abundance look at this now what is this grace also verse 9 reveals it it says for ye know that this grace is the grace of our lord jesus christ that though he was rich yet for my sake yet for your sake yet knowing that they are tribute collectors yet knowing that you can be prophetic and still your children will be bondsmen for your sake he became what poor to the end that his poverty will achieve something in your life what did he say that through his poverty ye might become what rich what is that grace also what is that grace also the capacity to become rich what Deuteronomy 8 says the power to get wealth let me tell you if you love your work with God if you want to be able to enter into the house of the Lord if you want to enjoy intimacy with the Spirit of God and not as promise used to say he says prosperity will reduce your prayer points and increase your prayer life you had better be serious why Jesus died hung naked on the cross so that riches will be part of your grace i don't care if you walk in diligence i salute you i don't care if you walk in love alone i salute you i don't care if you walk in knowledge alone i salute you i ask a simple question are you abounding 
in this grace also by the grace of god we are going to be contending that the sacrifice of jesus in my life it must show up in my finances it must be evidential in my finances i go back to second kings there's a mechanism and a strategy and i trust god that apostle will be taking us deeper but I saw a mechanism and I want to run through it very quickly so that when we begin to pray, we pray with understanding. We pray with understanding. Second Kings chapter 4. We go back there very quickly. Alright, watch this. He says, the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. That means this man neglected that grace also. Yes or no? It's an anomaly. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall what? Prosper. But we have a prophet that died with generational debt. Next verse. So, we are saying this so that some of us will not enter into this error. And those of us that may have entered, God will correct. In the name of Jesus. And Elisha said unto her, casually, a widow just came and told you that two of your sons are about to be taken. Look at the lamentation. Hey, casually what shall i do for thee it reminds me of the shunammite woman that when the prophet wanted to reward her he asked her he said what should i should i speak to the king on your behalf he was he was saying what do you want do you want access to men of influence she said, i don't know i'm comfortable i dwell in my own land amongst my own people that is what a true prophet does he liberates people and i thank god because tonight by his servant god will be liberating us casually casually say so what shall i do for thee say tell me what has thou in your house what has thou in your house jesus gave a mystery he said to him that had not even what he has will be taken away from him so it's not a problem of availability it's a problem of recognition you are saying you have nothing the master says when he comes what you call nothing he will collect it watch this he said he will give it to the person that has much and he will have even more people say the rich get richer i say it's scriptural the rich get richer the poor get poorer why because the poor man says he has nothing i was studying the early church and i realized when the holy ghost was poured out the bible says they lacked nothing acts chapter 3 even peter peter said silver and gold i have not but i'm not a poor man such as i have i give i may lack finances but i have something to give it's a mindset it's a mindset that's why jesus said what thinkest thou so the prophet said and she said thine handmaid had not anything poverty had wrecked her capacity to recognize there is a way that if you don't tackle this problem it will grow so big that it will become but for the mercy of god too late the bible says wisdom speaking says those that seek me early will find me and she said i had been had not anything in the house save a pot of oil next verse we're running very quickly then he said go go you are not as limited as you think you are if i be a prophet and the word of god is upon my lips that creative word go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors time will fail me to talk about what that really means he says recognize what is of value in your neighbors recognize the store of value i remember when god was speaking to joshua in joshua chapter 1 verse 8 he said you should be courageous be strong he told him that he will possess the land that's what god speaking to him said immediately joshua had that encounter joshua went immediately to half the tribe of ephraim to the rubenites and he asked them that this is what the lord told me and they said the exact same thing to joshua they said we will do as you have said only thou be strong after the encounter god said go and possess the land he identified those who had already possessed their own land borrow the vessels of all thy neighbors empty vessels borrow not a few i trust that as the servant of god comes up tonight he will be giving us vessels a vessel is something that has the capacity to retain something valuable all this porosity money is entering your hand you don't know what to do with it you lack vessels 
I trust God that by his prophet he will be revealing to us vessels that can contain the harvest that God is bringing our way. So that when the tribute collectors show up, look at how Jesus finished that parable and I end by saying it. As he was telling that story, Jesus said, look, 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 so that they will not be offended. Not because I am incapable. So that they will not take offense. Look at what Jesus did. Because he himself is a king, he didn't ask Judas to give him. Did he say, Judas, you my treasurer, give me a coin there. He said, I cannot be under tribute. Peter, go. Catch a fish. I am the king of the earth. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. I cannot bow before God. And then bow before men. No way. No way. Jesus looked and said, this is an aberration. Peter, you are a fisherman. But I put a prophetic word upon your ability. The first time I told you, catch fish. Go and sell it. This time around, because it is tribute that they need. My creation will pay tribute. I am the king of the earth. And Peter went. And he caught that fish. And inside that fish, he saw a what? A gold coin came and he gave the tribute collectors a coin that nobody else had because it was not minted by any king the lord of the earth himself produced it i trust god very quickly you are going to cry say lord tonight say lord tonight every strategy designed by satan to limit me financially i remove myself in the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Rekete belebo shabayakata. Rekete kaskata yata. Ibrake shekete beleke. Rekete shkata ya. Ropete shkata lada. Rekete shkata ya. Ipete se nebelege nebo shabaya. Jesus. Rekete kashata. I exempt myself. I exempt myself. I exempt myself. Rekete beleke nebo shoto bariyakata. Rekete bele bo shabari akata. Ibra kete shata. Rekete shkata ya. Ibra rekete le bo shabari akata. Repo shabari akata. Enanos koto bele kadi. Rekete bo shabari akata ya. Rekete shkata ya. Repo shkata. Ibra te shata ya. Jesus. 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 Second prayer point we are going to pray. I want you to say, Father. Father. I receive grace to discern and maximize prophetic instructions in the name of Jesus. Rekete bo shabari akata. Rekete shataya. Rekete shataya. Repo shabari akata. Rekete shataya. Epate sebele kete bari akata. Matosh kete. Ipre kete shata. E bari akata. Matosh shabari kete bo Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Rekete bele bo shabare. Rekete dar yakata. Uprake. Rekeskete. E bar yakata. Ropoteskate ya. Ibrakata. E brakata. Rekete shataba. Ofrakadesha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ezra chapter 7. I want to show you something. Something very powerful. Ezra chapter 7. Very quickly, media, please help me. Ezra chapter 7, verse 21 to 24. This is our last and final prayer point. Ezra chapter 7, 21 to 24. And I, even I, attacked Zesis, the king. He called himself the king of kings. So this is one of the kings of the earth. Do make a decree to all the treasurers which are beyond the river. Apostle was speaking yesterday. He told us about the abundance of the sea being converted to me. Isaiah chapter 60. He said that whatsoever a Jimmy the priest, the scribe of the law of the God of heaven shall require of you. It be done what? It be done what? It be done what? 
The Bible says he has made us kings and priests. We are going to say kings of the earth. Say kings of the earth. If I be called of God, I command you to release your treasures to me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep praying. Shadabalakata Barusia. Very powerful revelation. Rabakato Sodo Bradega de Balarabakatush. Ligata Baruti Siana Balarabalarabush. Manda Prakato Sata Nekato Siana Balarabakash. Rabakato Sodo Bradega de Balarabakatush. Ligata Baruti Siana Balarabalarabush. Manda Prakato Sata Nekato Siana Balarabakash. Reketeko Sada Balarabash. Thank you for the abundance of your word. Liparoto Suta Parotisha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated for a few minutes. You will get up again. Just a few minutes. Very powerful revelation. I don't know how many of you were listening to what Jimmy was sharing. Amazing revelation. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your hands As we lift our eyes and praise It's you that I see It's you that I see Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 7 Tonight I'm sharing About God's wealth transfer agenda Please listen carefully. Please listen carefully. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 7. Read with me. One, two, read. The rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower. Please talk to me. The rich ruleth over the poor. It didn't say the rich man. The rich anything rules over the poor anything and the borrower is servant to the lender the borrower remains a servant to the lender it's an ordinance as far as this earth is concerned that one of the ways satan makes slaves is to hijack the economy of the earth listen carefully the bible says a borrower is servant to the lender provided you are the one at the other end to receive regardless of who and what you think you are he says you remain a slave there is a conspiracy listen carefully there is a conspiracy upon the earth and that conspiracy like Jimmy was sharing is a strategy by the kingdom of darkness remember i taught you that dominion happens through words through ideas through informations strongholds also get to men through words through ideas and information that is programmed to men that does something to them our loved ones are victims of this limitation the bible says where jimmy shared that a prophet of god notice satan did not come and say your generation must serve me he made sure something happened to them and in return the children who had potentials to be prophets we are now going to be dragged into a system of servanthood. There is a way Satan keeps the seed, the church, our families in captivity using economy. Most people do not understand that wealth is warfare. Wealth is not about cars. It's not about houses. 
is a contention for dominion the epicenter the corporate headquarters of dominion on earth is economy more than politics more than whatever it is the epicenter of dominion jesus taught us that when it comes to this there are only two masters on earth god and mammon not satan god and mammon and he said you must serve one of them in your lifetime so it's not a question of whether you want to serve or not you must serve one the only option you have is to choose god or mammon there is an agenda by the gates of hell to keep the people of god in poverty in penury in captivity this is not the issue of job this is not the issue of cars and houses and jeeps and no 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 it's an agenda because for as long listen carefully for as long as the body of christ remains poor and beggarly and struggling servitude satan will leave you praying in tongues he doesn't mind satan will leave you seeing your visions visions of the church being built visions of mission agencies that will never come to pass because whoever owns the resources makes the rules whoever owns the resources makes the rules i don't have time but i want to just give us just an introduction are we together the bible says in babylon something happened look at me that once upon a time a king said build an image use money to build that image not cement not block he said that image must be built with gold and he says everyone at the sound of the shofar everyone rich or poor if you are within that territory bow down to not me the stature that i have used money bow to the system that i have built he didn't say bow to me he said bow to the gold and there were certain gentlemen who said no we are not going to do this he said you will not do this when you hear the musicians when you hear everybody you bow down to that stature you must bow down it was 90 feet solid gold and the boys refused they said oh king we love you we respect you but when it comes to this one no we will not bow to you our god is able to save us but even if he does not deliver us oh king we will not do this it was a fight between gold and the loyalty that comes with it many people see the rule is this bow to that stature and then earn a living that's the condition that on earth if you will ever rise you must get to the point where you are forced by life to bow to that gold stature so you can be coming to church and someone calls you and says where are you you say I, i'm leading prayer someone say what nonsense prayer you better rush and come quickly and you bow to the stature you have to run to respond because your daily bread satan does not have to come and stop you he just stops the system of supply notice that everyone in the bible who demonstrated a level of influence with finances most of them either operated the covenant of god or they were satanic and diabolic are we together wealth and prosperity played a role in the resurrection the salvation the bible says jesus was on the cross prophecy said he would be in a virgin tomb that was where resurrection had to happen but every preacher every well wisher finished their ministry at the cross nobody had the access to continue only a man of influence called joseph of arimathea he used his influence and went to caesar and said give me the body of this one i have a tomb already and they took his body and put in the tomb many of you did not realize that jesus had to raise up from the grave that's where that scripture now becomes complete oh grave where is thy sting oh death you know oh grave where is thy sting oh death you know where is thy victory and so on and so forth there is an indoctrination and satan has used preachers to bring this indoctrination let me tell you this you see i've said it again correcting the body of christ in itself is a ministry is an office not every preacher not every spiritual man has the anointing to correct the body 
the mistakes and the imbalances stem from people who believe that they are good observers and in a bid to balance what they call carnality and materialism they have become prey for satan most people who have preached against wealth are people who are secretly frustrated by the inability of understanding the system to make it happen so to excuse that frustration they carve out a theology that keeps people bound zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 satan took jesus to a high mountain showed him the glories of the earth right where the scripture we shared day before yesterday and he says all of this he called it power has been given to me cry yet saying thus saith the lord of hosts my cities my influence my ideas will through the instrumentality of prosperity not just prayers not just fasting my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad and the lord shall comfort zion there is there is an indoctrination and you know sometimes i stand and i watch people and sometimes i literally fight tears because it's amazing how many well believing christians have fallen prey to this is a transgenerational indoctrination are we together now it, it is it has come it has become a stronghold we have become victims of babylon we dance by her tune that she goddess that is upon a horse coordinates our, our activity they use money to tell you when to pray they use money to tell you when to marry they use money to tell you when to come out of a house. They use money to tell you what geographic location you should be. And you are helpless because the rich will always rule over the poor. Every time. Listen. The Bible gives us a mystery. That in Egypt, the people were building as slaves. Remember, God's covenant people, they were building. And then the Bible says the Egyptians provided straw. So there was limited supply. The people just needed to do the whole building and then the moment god began to speak to them about freedom notice when they went to pharaoh moses went to pharaoh on their behalf and said thus saith the god of the hebrews let my people go pharaoh said i know what is wrong economy you are having some level of convenience that's why you even have time to hear god he said stop giving them straw you will now go and look for the straw by yourself and the moment they look for the straw they start they started shouting to moses moses don't go again just leave us here satan uses economy to keep people away from god understand this because of poverty there are marriages that are the will of god that has have refused to happen simply because the requisite resources that can help the individuals have not been there because of this there are books that should be written there are prophecies that nations should hear there are programs there are men and women with strange anointings upon the soil of this nation that deserve to be here be heard by the world do you know how much it takes um Ejimi, do you know how much it takes to pay for a tv program per month just to host a television station on the average not hd 13 million per month yet there are football clubs that have six of them they have their stadium they have everything why because they belong to the kings of the earth so they don't charge them tribute all that money comes from us we are the ones who give it and then we become slaves have you noticed that the greatest attack in your life will come in the area of your finances if you have not noticed keep watching satan does not have a problem with your education if he tries to stop you from loving god and it looks like he can't get it he will be waiting for you he knows one day you will have children he knows one day school fees will come just because he's allowing you with your 200 naira to be able to eat every day a day will come you will not be able to pray not because anybody changed you satan will squeeze you to a point 
where you will have to bow notice how many young people graduate with zeal and power they love god they have been refined for four or five years look at those people three years later they are hardly christians again are we together people who will vow and tell you i will never collect bribe three years later they are at the heart of it notice how many people cannot sleep and it's money that is causing it it's an attachment to money i just checked and i discovered that seven hundred thousand is missing in this house and i can't sleep again it's a sign that i'm a slave to it it's a sign that i serve it I made up my mind under God that I will never serve money with my life. I made up my mind that I will serve God and money will serve me. Are we together now? If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, you will be surprised to see that in the distant future. Brothers and sisters, do you know this is why many of our parents, you talk to them about evangelism, they look at you and laugh. They say, sit down, let me tell you a story. In 1975, I was the president of one group. As you, all these things you are doing, I did it. Ask them, daddy, at what point did you leave God? He will tell you about something that happened in 1989 that made him vow he would never follow God again my city's true prosperity shall be spread abroad i have the privilege of talking with ministers do you know that one of the greatest frustrations of pastors right now is not prayer is finances when i talk with pastors you would think they are going to ask me secrets of the anointing and say man of god how do you do it you sit down and say man of god please please what how are you doing this thing because right now as we are sitting and all of a sudden when a revival is about to break forth in the auditorium that the ministry is using the landlord will say i've come up with a new policy the price has been doubled because you people make noise and because you make noise we are doubling the price if you cannot do it there is a club somewhere that wants to come and start using it and they are willing to give us six months advance and here comes the pastor with all his anointing together with the elders tongue talking according to the vision they saw themselves till december in that place but money is about to cancel a vision if i ask all of you to write your prayer request right now on behalf of you and your family and i carry it and read it over 80 percent of it will be financial issues do you know what it means for a child to go to the father or mother and say daddy i'm ready to go to school for a student and the father says what do you want me to do That's why many men are angry, brothers and sisters. It looks like there is an age range men get to that they don't laugh again. Because the reality of the frustration, no matter what you do, even if it's their birthday, while you are celebrating them, they are distracted. They've forgotten they are, they are even in that place. It's a strategy. Imagine now that because of my financial needs, I now cook up a revelation. You see when you see men of god manipulating people don't be too quick to judge i'm not justifying it but it's the reality are we together and so a man of god is preaching and here are the children they are school fees and he has to look for a way so he takes advantage of the gift of god and says pastor alpha i saw five million in your account do something quickly come and give me two million otherwise a course is following you next week he knows he's lying but the reality of the poverty will not allow him to repent and say i'm just joking he's not joking he's waiting for that money if that money comes he will collect it that's why many sisters are running away from married men of god the devil didn't say stop marrying them the devil just said let me make a specimen with a man of god and rubbish the integrity of the anointing in the face of finances and when they just go to the parents and say look i'm a man of god say no 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 we can worship at your church we can be kingdom financiers but no way it's a strategy listen to what i'm telling you in the days that will come let me tell you the church the family and the individuals that are financially bankrupt will be slaves they will do you know there are certain levels of revelations you cannot have until you are prosperous just allow me to prove it to you i hope you know that out of everybody in egypt it was the king that god revealed 
the famine that was going to come the revelation of the famine came to the king not because he was born again he was the one in the position to create help it's in your bible when pharaoh was in egypt and joseph was there who had the dream in the night why didn't god show joseph directly it would have been useless because the economic empowerment to effect what the dream meant was not there there is a position that if you do not rise you can't god cannot show you what he's doing it's not just prayer and fasting there is an economic position where god can now say son i see the enemy bringing diseases to kill children he shows you because the capacity to stop it is there pharaoh goes to sleep in the night and god bypasses joseph god bypasses somebody he gave a gift to and goes to the one who has the position to solve the problem and shows him the dream and the, and he gets up he never said it's a lie it's true that dream came from god but it came to a man that had substance no wonder we are not seeing anything in church because it makes no difference there's no point god showing you who is dying because you will only pray about it oh god won't you help them whereas they are crying remember apostle james taught us and said don't see somebody hungry and tell him i bid you god speak go in peace hmm. there are dimensions of instructions that cannot come to you so the rewards also cannot come to you because there is no capacity there is a tragedy that the body of christ must be delivered from you open your mouth to speak about wealth and prosperity and the harsh criticisms that come from pastors that come from people i'm not talking of all this money mongering i'm going to gather 10 cars this agenda is not about cars and houses it's about kingdom advance it's about bringing supplies how many mission agencies do you see they will, you see them looking hungry looking like whatever it is you go to the mission fields and watch the way missionaries suffer as if they are dying their wives and children are there yet a prostitute a prostitute will sleep with an unbeliever and by the next morning she has become a millionaire that million is the prayer point of that missionary and then you tell me since i was young now i am old i have not seen the righteous forsaken that's why when we raise these songs in church members are angry while they listen to us Fill me up till I overflow. I wanna run. I wanna run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I wanna run. There is a dimension of kingdom wealth as we are speaking now koinonia is connected to over 45 nations of the world it's not just with tongues they are listening to brothers and sisters there is nobody that has sold one message we would have made hundreds of millions of naira from sales most ministries it's not an insult but most ministries use sales as a system of generating revenue it's a sacrifice that said god said we should do in order to communicate christ to a generation but it takes not just obedience but capacity to make it happen for years as we're standing right now there are security people outside every koinonia service riot or no riot there are securities all and all of them are paid there are buses after the service we've done this for years there's not been a single time that we say stop because there was no money brothers and sisters the convenience you receive serving god there is a role that kingdom wealth played in it are you hearing what i'm saying that's the reason why we do not need to play any gimmicks on you and say do this bring this bring that bring this this is the pressure that you see on preachers they announce their birthdays months before the time to force members to start preparing because the man of god is hoping that he can cash in at that time and at least they can give him something imagine that i put pressure on you now and say all of you buy me a car 
Imagine that I put pressure on you. Think how I destroy your salvation. Think how I destroy your passion for God. Have you seen crusades now? A man of God will preach a sound message. Call sinners that are helpless. But because of financial constraint, at the end of a sound crusade, when you should even be helping them with resources, you now say, well, uh, before I end, John chapter 5 verse 11. Five dollars and eleven cents. I want to what you look at how you ruin something that is a blessing. And a sinner that should love God said, You see them, these are the thieves again, and they find their way and go back and die and go to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are going to pray. I made a covenant with myself that me and poverty. I waved it goodbye, it waved me back. I have no business with it. Listen regardless of where you are the dynamics and other things we will teach it subsequently we have there are teachings tonight is not just tonight is to expose you that this finance thing is warfare warfare i have had encounters in my life i've had encounters with angels i've had encounters with demons but the fiercest encounter in my life came with the spirit i've shared it with you you've heard me say it, that i was praying and all of a sudden i had a vision and i saw an entity looking like a sea creature the eyes were as big as a human head and the tail was a serpent the tail had its own life aside from the body and he was looking at me red fierce eyes and all he said is so you think you can bring god's people into abundance it was not so you think you are getting people filled with the holy ghost when you are healed you are healed for yourself when you are saved, you are saved for yourself. It's only finances that can get to others. Satan prefers a healthy church working in signs and wonders than a church that is prosperous. Are we together? Hmm. I was told there was a family here, sadly, not too far from us, that the house caught fire. Was it the day before yesterday? And burnt everything. I can almost bet you many christians have gone to greet them now and say well done sir god bless you i saw in a vision that god will restore all things and then they move and leave the person if you see the lady in that house now getting into prostitution next week people believers will be the first to run their mouth and say what is all that there is no means to even say please take 10 naira for the sake of the children and it's not that you don't have the heart satan knows you have the heart so he will never allow the money get to you what is there for the body of christ to help and support this family and say look this is what we have 10 000 20 000 and say look we may not give you everything but at least let you don't sleep hungry must it be a special charity fund that's how broke we are what is special about it as i'm speaking to you right now right now do you know how much footballers get in a week if a church gets that they will finish their headquarters no more prayer the only prayer is fasting and saying souls Hapa. i once saw a young boy or a girl i don't know the mother came after koinonia i looked at the baby adorable baby but the baby was born with a many maybe they are even here listening to me with a serious condition a jimmy and for the rest of that the child is now eight weeks but the child was completely paralyzed and he had an acute state of pneumonia that child was on his way dying he was not just depending on prayer and miracles and the mother came they've done their best but the woman was watching her child die i said this is not the issue of prayer i asked them to come i i could not sleep i kept seeing the child's face all over the house and i had to send one of the protocol people i said bring this child when they brought this child from shika six weeks old the child was just gasping how much does it take to take this boy to surgery and give the boy a chance to live must it be like mephibosheth we're talking about resources with vision resources that are weapons you don't just use tongues money is a weapon you can send it send it to save souls he said how shall how shall they hear except they be a preacher he said how shall they be the preacher go except he is sent equipped
this thing grieves my spirit because i know what it is doing for people it's not many of us and 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 sadly we men of god must take responsibility the scope of our preaching is just to make sure you have enough let me tell you this look at me as you see me right now there is food in my house as you see me right now i have a car as you see me right now i have some money in my account so i would be a wicked man to act as if this is exactly what preachers do just because we have something small we come and stand and run our mouths on stage and talk nonsense i'm not thinking about what to wear if i want to wear a cloth i can call a tailor if i want to preach and pray overnight i have a generator that can run overnight but do you have it do i care a good shepherd lays down his life this is what we are talking about just because you are a preacher you have a little car you have a little house and all you tell people is just build your spirit their children are not going to school just build your spirit they are becoming arm robbers they are becoming tout it's a strategy we have a lot of children in this ministry and we have the privilege by the grace of god it is an honor for me to be able to put a smile in the face of these children there are people today who are graduates because money was used as a weapon. There are people today who are doing well because money was used as a weapon. There are people who have escaped death because money was used as a weapon. There are people who have had the courage to turn away from a life of a nonsense rebellious life because finance was a weapon. Have you ever been taught that money is not about luxury, it's a weapon? It's a weapon of war. And in the days to come, it will be one of the most effective weapons. Are we together many children who should not die died because that weapon was not there to fight the war for them many individuals very simple cases some of you as you are seated here you've not paid your school fees that's your whole prayer while we are praying now you're just crying and satan sits back because the rich will rule over the poor and the borrower will be slave to the lender this is not about there are no matter how greedy you are you can't enter 10 cars at the same time no matter how we are not talking about i know that there have been exaggerations people whose life is just filled with lust and all they want is to wear the gold and silver but i'm bringing to you a call this is a call as serious as your fasting a call as serious as your spiritual life wake up to wake up is not to hustle to wake up is not to do business to wake up is not even to get a job to wake up is to come to the realization that there is a war and the destiny of my children is at stake like the woman the wife of a prophet yet they were carrying the same prophet that should carry prosperity the children were about going to slavery must satan carry all our young ladies and marry them to devils and we and witch and wizards all around simply because of financial resources you see how many christian ladies right now will get up and two weeks you don't see them again and you found out that they've married one son of the born woman somewhere and the families will endorse them because the devil will make sure that lady now is supposed to be a prophetess but finances deviated her assignment Is God saying anything to you tonight? This is a war. Don't see money as some luxury. And when we say money, you are just thinking Gucci, Louis Vuitton. Look, I'm teaching you things from the kingdom. Thank God for all the blessings. But there is only so much you can do for that. We are talking of lives that will be changed. I plan to use resources as a dangerous weapon. The devil will hate me in this lifetime because of what will be done with resources look the good schools in this nation our children cannot go there the schools that are taught values i had the opportunity to visit um lean academy beautiful school i got to talk with the man he's an unbeliever but very wise and intelligent man the the head teacher of the school was was a student in school of ministry he may be here and i got to talk and when i found out the school fees i said this is a beautiful school but how many children can go there Look what has happened to our government schools now. A teacher sags his trouser 
and goes around f9 parallel yet he's the one teaching accounting yet he's the one teaching mathematics he's as confused as the student they help themselves to solve the class work that's where your child is this is not just an issue of wealth it's an issue of warfare satan is doing something to the minds of a generation that's why you see all these young boys now they are not serious you see a boy of 16 years all his, his business is girls and computer game as small as he is prayer zero everything that is of god zero so the devil now suggests something else codeine and what they call that thing uh, tramadol and all those demonic things and then there is a clique of people just like him and he becomes part of it it's a war it's a serious war my child will not get up and serve the devil i will use everything he says see also that you are bound in this grace by god's grace we are going to we will soon set up a school and we'll set it up and have the resources to bring the price down enough to allow meritocracy that children that are competent will attend it not just children of big people i made a covenant with god that i will never raise people who are just anointed no i believe in influence i'm not a fool don't you let anybody mislead you there are levels of your life you can never rise a church can buy a land but no influence and a government can just come up with a policy and collect it halfway into the building and there's nobody to speak for them you must have the resources that give you the ability to speak at the gates he said let her walk speak for her there are times you are not allowed to speak it's your resources that is can speak are we together the other time god tv god tv one of the largest christian channels we have on earth the few christian channels that are preserving the purity of godliness they were asking for six million dollars what is six million dollars for god's sake that for 21 days non-stop they are crying you listen and there is nothing that is the gospel for those three weeks you listen no salvation prayer no nothing is just begging begging i love them and i respect them what is there for somebody to just get up and what is six million a lady somewhere will smile at a billionaire and say i saw a house somewhere i want it and he says how much say 10 million dollars say all for you and satan mocks the church look how we fast for money is that a reason to fast why should you fast for money there are people going to hell why in the world should you fast for money do you know talking about prosperity forever is a cause why should our churches be filled with the issue of prosperity all the time money 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 because that's what is needed there are more important things i will multiply them they will not be few i will glorify them they will not be small let me tell you there is a campaign we are leading in this nation it's a campaign of balance balance that you can be anointed and prosperous and god-fearing and serious and a responsible father a husband and a leader that's the lamb's wife complete complete can i confess to you satan is not after you as young as we are satan is after our children i have seen this thing satan is beginning to give up on our generation because we are following the patterns of our fathers you know our parents loved god to the extent that money or no money that god to death now with the young people with intelligence we are finding do you know the biggest trouble on earth now is between young people from 16 years downwards not the other ones some who are 20 their parents have died and it has forced responsibility on them but these our young children 16 you sit down and talk with them and they will surprise you to hear the kind of things they are learning and where they are learning it from someone has got to arise no education no nothing you see somebody that tells you he's a graduate tell him to write a letter a letter he writes a letter as if he's chatting he can't construct an intelligent thing and that's why all the positions of influence will be occupied by unbelievers then very few believers they squeeze us somewhere where it's impossible to grow ask a young man to construct to you a sentence right now you will be surprised nonsense and that person is a master's holder it's not his fault he was mentored by people who were limited
through prosperity shall my city my agenda it's not just about houses don't join people who don't know the purpose of money don't join money mongers who everything about their life is money 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 oh i drank water in a gold cup i ate fish with a silver spoon wonderful may god bless you enjoy it but more importantly because of me one thousand souls were saved in one month that's money with a mission because of me i decided to sponsor the children of the missionaries and i said you can go and preach the 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 one that pains me most eh, jimmy is these missionaries i i think maybe one day we'll play a documentary here for many of you to see the sufferings of those who have signed out for the kingdom you look at their children you look at a poor woman who came to hold the hands of a man to say i will walk with you through life educated but simply because of the gospel they have been reduced to ashes and we are here buying cars and buying all of this and claiming that because of that god is faithful it's not just a man's a man's worth does not constitute in the abundance of things don't get me wrong i'm not saying to sit down and celebrate mediocrity you should be a partaker of the wisdom of god in your life however more importantly wealth with a mission imagine that you can buy five buses and give certain ministries around capro um what they call them navigators and all these people and say this is the hand of god upon your life what is my business with your 20 estates what's my business with your 100 estates you will die and your irresponsible children will sell it that was the pain of solomon but that someone can stand today do you know billy graham preached in north korea the only preacher koinonia please let's wake up this thing is an agenda of darkness to enslave me to enslave you to enslave our children that a time will come the last time you will see your child was when he was three years old you will see him again slavery took him to go and walk look at all these young girls that are in italy these young girls that are in libya don't you think they have parents are the parents not alive someone just comes to tell them i want to give you a job in libya and takes those young girls and go and ruin and wreck and destroy and shred their lives they come back years later their contemporaries have gone far ahead of them and they are back no education no god no wisdom if anybody marketed poverty for you i'm canceling it tonight at the same time if anybody has opened your eyes to see that all about money is just car and jeep i still cancel it tonight Amen. that people men and women whose heart is not in their treasure who have set their minds on things above that no matter what god gives you he can place a demand at it at any time god can say look pastor alpha these five children are your project and you say yes sir not just because you are obedient the means is there noiseless impact not making noise all around and talking rubbish imagine how many ladies here can have foundations and bring all these young girls whose lives have been destroyed and change them and build them you can't do that if you have to depend on your daily bread somewhere we are going to pray lord make me your treasurer rise up the first treasure that you had disappointed you lord i can be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom i can be trusted with the resources of heaven lift your voice please let's pray let's pray let's pray lift your voice let's pray Let's pray. Lord, trust us with your resources. Lord, enough of selling our souls to the devil. Enough of selling our dignity to the systems of the world. Pray, 
Using the weapon of poverty and lack, the Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 26. The Bible says, For God gives a man that is good in his sight. What? Wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner, he giveth travail to gather and to heap that he may bring to him that is good before God. Lord, the wisdom that will attract resources from the world to be used for kingdom business. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Quickly, please. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13. Four verses. We are reading 13 to 17. Please, everyone, look at your screen if you can see it. I want to read it. This wisdom have I seen under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. Are you ready now? Follow the story. Next verse. There was a little city and few men within it. And there came a great king against it and beside it and built great bulwarks against it. We are talking of warfare here. Warfare. Now there was a there was found in that city a what? Poor wise man. The Bible says and he by his wisdom delivered the city yet no man no man remembered the same poor man. 16. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Read the remaining. One to go. Nevertheless, a poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. You will never rise to a position of influence if all you have is just ideas, wisdom. It takes economic empowerment to make these proud kings of the earth listen to you. It's more than information. It's more than education. You need the resources that will force them to listen. Open your mouth and say, Lord, in addition to my wisdom, give me wealth. Give me wealth. Let me not be a poor wise man. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. It says, But thou shall remember the Lord thy God. Thou shall remember the Lord thy God. We are going to talk about the rest. There is something prosperity can do to you. It can make you forget God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's giving this man an advice. When you have built houses and when you are now comfortable, let me tell you this. There are many people who have never been prosperous enough to forget thinking about money. 
but there is a realm in your life you don't have to be a millionaire to get to that realm there is a realm where your basic needs are met beyond measure there is no reason why you should have concerns for food to eat you will be surprised to see that you will not pray for one month that the only time you open your bible is when you come to church you did plan to backslide comfort outside of god can make men happen like that he said thou shalt remember the lord thy god that's the message every other thing was just an addition to that message the central message in this verse was don't forget god he said but for your information to remind you it is he that giveth thee what power power, power. like a herbalist gives you a charm he says use it that god can give men the power capacity ability god can give a church the power to get well god can give a man the power to get well god can give a family the power to get well he said you have not because you ask not you do not have the power because you ask not you do not have the power that programs favor upon you because you ask not you do not have the keys and the ideas because you have not you are there looking around for it but you are refusing to ask it's not found on earth only god can give it Lift your voice and say, Lord, the power to get upon my family, upon my destiny. Now listen, when it comes to the issue of prosperity, there are systems whatever you receive in the spirit there are systems of knowledge you make money because of understanding not business not job it is your understanding that controls things there's no time to deal with that today but we're going to deal with two aspects just two areas number one is the favored dimension of kingdom wealth exodus chapter 3 exodus chapter 3 21 the favored dimension of kingdom wealth and i will give these people favor in the sight of wicked men god can use anybody to favor you egyptians are not the people to ask favor from i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians what will be the proof of the favor it says and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go emptiness is proof that there is no favor it says when there is a relationship between favor and abundance it says i will give these people favor i will give these people favor i will give joshua selman favor i will give koinonia favor before anybody doesn't matter who before governments before kings before nobles before gentiles i will give you favor let's see the fulfillment of it chapter 12 verse 36 god said i will give these people favor when god speaks can we trust him yes, sir. chapter 12 verse 36 quickly please chapter 12 read with me one to read and the lord gave the people favor in the sight of the egyptians so that they lent to them such things as they required and they spoiled the egyptians that's favor that's favor that somebody who has no business blessing your family will get up and say i have five houses i was sleeping and i saw in a dream and i brought the key and they immediately overnight let me tell you this i want you to believe this brothers and sisters get rich quick schemes may be wrong but god can give men speed of prosperity don't ever allow anybody indoctrinate you it is the training process that takes time 
the manifestation will happen overnight like the twinkling of an eye it is true it takes time to be trained but when the favor lands on you you can sleep in prison one night and by the next morning brothers and sisters there is no reason to ever see the trace of poverty around your life again it says and they spoiled the egyptians if all you will get in this life is what the labor market gives you prepare to be greedy prepare to be angry prepare to have stress there's nothing wrong with your productivity remember an anointing was put on the fish fish does not produce coin but when a grace came on that fish coin came out it's one thing to be skilled it's another thing for an anointing to be upon your skill when a car abuse a house that's no longer profession that's favor are you hearing what i'm saying when share rental can buy bus for a mission agency then this is not rentals again there is a hand that is influencing it when your song all of a sudden gets to the nations you had the skill but the wings is no longer skill that one is grace i believe in being skillful but is your skill anointed there are many gifted people on earth that will never see the finger of god hallelujah i was traveling to lagos from a few weeks ago and i flew with professor wale soinka in fact he was sitting down at my seat and while i was just admiring the man truly i was and i was looking at him and the air hostess was trying to get him up so that i'll sit and i rebuked her i said don't do this this is a prestigious man this is a man who from the confines of his village has gone around the whole world nobody does unusual things naturally whether the person admits or not the truth is that it cannot happen there is a level of growth and influence and impact now and i looked at him said my god look at this there are people who go to the devil they are skilled though they are businessmen they finish the business meeting while people are sleeping they are there naked in a shrine they have you see the man and they tell you this guy came from harvard he's wise enough he knows with his wisdom he also needs prosperity so the harbor says sit down and he sits naked that's the ceo of a company of an airline and all of a sudden they concoct rubbish on his head and once they finish they kill a baby there and drain the baby's blood they all drink it the man gets up and customers start coming his wisdom created the company something else is what is calling the customers believers do not understand the favor dimension I, I have cried this thing in this ministry and tonight i know our time is gone but please in the next two three minutes everyone that asked receive it cry and say lord put your faith on my life Hallelujah. Listen, we are praying. Favor is not just money. Favor is men. There are things money cannot do. Let me tell you how you know you are favored. By the speed with which men arise to help you. You can be rich and die alone. Build a house alone, no helper. Send the children alone, no helper. Favor is not when you have money. Favor is when you have men. In the multitude of men is a king's honor. When you have men, you have their resources. Listen, let me tell you. There are some of us, we have some money, but we don't have favor. Don't be deceived that just because there are resources, 
you have tea and bread you can build a little house that does not mean you have favor favor is when men come David was in the cave of Adullam men left everywhere and came they covenanted with themselves that's favor there is the favor dimension you know when favor is working when men begin to appear you hear people testifying an uncle called me I told you no man comes to you by himself they are called we are getting to there that will be the last prayer point father every area in my life that have not experienced favor send men send men send men send men with their wisdom send men with their resources send men to koinonia send men to every family here send men oh God to every ministry to every business send lifters send promoters send announcers Send multipliers, men of influence, men of access. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Hosea chapter 12. There are three dimensions to kingdom wealth and prosperity. Please listen. The first dimension is called transactional wealth. Wealth that is as a result of selling value. Business. Your job. You exchange your skill. You exchange your productivity for a financial reward. That's the first level of wealth. It's called transactional wealth. You don't receive rewards until you sell something. Your idea, your skill. That's the first level of wealth. The second level of wealth is called transformational wealth. It is the reward you get for changing lives. It's the reward you get for transforming people. Are we together? If you bless someone, you raise someone, you lift someone, that person now blesses you. You are not selling anything. You are giving. The person is coming back with gratitude because his life has been transformed. This is the second level of wealth. The third dimension of wealth is called sovereign wealth. Wealth by the finger of God. Exclusively a product of prophecy. These three dimensions of wealth must work in your life. There are many of us only the transactional level. You have a job. You are doing a little business. Wonderful. But you are limited. Listen. Please give me this. If this is 100 naira, transactional wealth says it's 100 naira forever. I can't buy this 1,000. It will be a scam. You will be cheating me. I can, I can sue you to court. Are we together? So this is, I'm selling a product. That money remains provided my idea works. If I am sick or something happens to my system, this is gone. It's over forever. The second is that I can find out when you are thirsty and give you this. And you will remember that one day I bless you and now buy me a carton of it. Your rewarding me is based on your perception of my usefulness in your life. But there is the third dimension. Wealth by the finger of God. Verse, verse 13 please. Hosea 12 and verse 13. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Not by their desire. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. He said, and by a prophet, they were preserved. There is a dimension of the prophetic in wealth. That's why Habalis will never go out of business. 
most hedonistic businessmen know they will pay their staff 200,000 and pay a herbalist 10 million is the perception of the value are we together second chronicles 2020 and then we'll pray the last prayer point tonight second chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20 and they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa and as they went forth Jehoshaphat stood listen and said hear me O koinonia and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem he said believe in the Lord your God so shall ye be established but believe his prophets so shall you prosper so when the woman was in challenge there was no time to start learning any business skill the, her children was listen there are things that you need god to come speedily when will you learn business skill to play the rent you can learn later on but the rent needs to be paid in 24 hours that one you don't need transactional wealth you don't need transformation you need sovereign wealth the finger of god that by this time tomorrow the economy of a land the reason why many african nations are poor they have abused the voices that god has put they are intelligent people with economic formulas but when god speaks most of them just look and say oh don't worry but the prophet said by this time tomorrow and a foolish man say even if god opens the windows of heaven shall these things be he said you will see it but you will never partake of it every time people were hungry in the bible god sent prophets jehoshaphat here the widow of zarephath and several other people they were looking for fish in john 21 they couldn't catch any fish suddenly the very prophet himself the prophet of prophets jesus little children have you any catch he said no he said cast your net to the right side immediately they caught fish they had to call on their partners to help them i like you to pray because i'm going to speak certain things from the depth of my heart pray and say lord change my life i tap into the dimension of sovereign wealth wealth by the finger of god wealth by the finger of god Hallelujah. In 2007, I had a vision, a real vision, not a dream. In that vision, I entered, many things happened, but I entered a room, a door was open. As soon as I entered that room, I saw dollars, I saw pounds, I saw naira, and I had gone for a meeting where Bishop Oyedeko was there and I knelt down before him. I was sowing a seed and he told me there is more. He said I should bring out. When I sowed it, he laid his hands on me and I entered that room. I looked. I was holding something like a bag. How can a room just be full of money alone? And surprisingly, I was not even connected to it. Not like you want to carry quickly. And then a voice spoke and said I should pick. And then I picked a few of the different currencies and I put there. I was about to step out and I had the audible voice of God. Four words, massive kingdom wealth transfer. I had that voice. I remember when I announced that thing, people insulted me. People said all kinds of things. And I said, this is not my fault. It's something that I saw. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill your prophets. That there are people who God will make a declaration and they will just sit down and not care and say it doesn't matter all these ones are nonsense please brothers and sisters hear me there is a prophetic dimension of wealth you hear people receiving alerts here that they don't know the person who sent it you can just see one name you can just see two names it's not a lie it's not a scam one of our dear ones here 
after one of such sessions like that he just went to kaduna and found out that dunamis were sending all their land and they just brought him and kept him at the helm of affairs and god just multiplied and lifted that guy like that people's lives are changing except your own there are people who are not as smart as you but they can be foolish enough to say lord i believe you i remember when I, the lord instructed me to go to canaan land and sow a seed into god's servant bishop oyedeko and i went there did it i won't tell you what but it was a sacrifice and when i went i came out happily though costly i was on my way to leave and the lord told me to kneel down there at canaan land he said put your hand on the ground i put my hand there and he said from today you have entered overflow see nobody invents these things they are systems you can argue about it or align with it truly let me tell you this some of you say but i'm not educated apostle some of you say i come from a poor family god created these three dimensions of wealth to give everybody a chance that he that escapes the sword of jehu you can escape okay agree that for some reason you do not yet understand the business skills agree that you have not gained influence to change anybody